Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Day, and uh, I'm going to be doing a talk uh, with me and Phil Estes, or Phil Estes and I. Uh, and I'll tell you about the state of Container D, and we'll do a little demo. Stupid back in my pocket. So, uh, Container D uh, is Container D is at GitHub Container D slash Container D. Um, <laughs> pretty simple. Uh, you can see there we, we have stars as well, just like uh, Linux Kit. Um, so. Uh, go there. So, so uh, <laughs> little little history here. So, Container D has been around since about Docker 111, and um, uh, the, and the idea was to to break out the uh, management of of the container runtime into a separate component. Um, but in the uh, about a year ago, um, we decided to uh, bring more of the functionality that's required for containers into Container D, and that's been uh, what's called the 1.0. Uh, the 1.0 train, and basically we're taking uh, what's been spun out. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna con uh, and so why are we doing this? Um, basically, we've uh, continued to spin, spin out quite a, a lot of projects out of the, the uh, container runtime, um, and we need something that can be targeted for uh, uh, just small container runtimes, lightweight container runtimes, and the, the, the biggest example is the Kubernetes CRI, but also SwarmKit, and without out having to have the entire Docker engine uh, with you. Um, we've also donated it to the CNCF, uh, in, which in a very similar process to the uh, RunC and libcontainer and the OCI. So the technical goals of Containerd is to have a gRPC API plus a thick client library uh, with full OCI support um, and our development focus is around stability and performance uh, with a very, very well-defined core of container functionality. And I'll go over this in a little bit. Um, everything is very decoupled, um, and they're almost like little tiny microservices without being... I mean, they are, they are almost microservices. I'll show you in a second. Um, and it allows for uh, you basically to have an a la carte approach to the problem. So you can choose as much as you want. It makes it very pluggable. It allows you to like switch, swap parts of the system in and out very easily. So um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I, I skipped ahead actually here. Uh, so uh, all cart, right? So basically, if you want to use just the runtime part, you can use just the runtime part. If you want to use uh, snapshotters, which are the uh, uh, container D graph driver equivalents, uh, you can just use those. If you want to use the distribution components, you can just use those. Um, it, it's all very, very easily to select what you uh, want to use and what you don't. Uh, we also use known good technologies, uh, OCI container runtime and images. We use G gRPC for API and Prometheus for metrics. So a couple of use cases just to, just to give you to see where this fits in the ecosystem. I don't know if you've noticed, but Containerd has showed up in most of the other, the other projects that you've seen so far. But uh, So currently, uh, Docker uses it uh, in the O2 uh, line, uh, as well as uh, it's being integrated in Kubernetes. And you'll see that uh, with CRI Containerd after uh, Phil and I's talk. Uh, and then there's uh, an experimental swarm kit driver, which takes away the... Uh, uh, takes away Docker and just runs SwarmKit directly on Containerd, as well as uh, Linux Kit and BuildKit. Um, in, the, in, in, in the future, there's uh, uh, it'll be used in IBM Cloud, uh, as well as uh, I think there's an open fast uh, uh, implementation, and also uh, Scott Colton uh, was, was uh, has been using it for some R and D related to Puppet. And uh, you know, if you want to, you know, your project here, hopefully uh, you can use Containerd as well. Uh, so a little bit about the architecture. Um, we have the uh, so this shows b basically the the interfaces on top, uh, uh, gRPC uh, and the metrics API uh, through Prometheus is how you interact with Containerd. Um, this uh, delineates most of the uh, most of the components of of uh, that you interact with as a client in gRPC. Uh, on the storage side for images, we have a, a content store, which is a crypt like a uh, a strong hashed content store to pull image uh, artifacts into. We have a snapshot driver that lets you manage the file system and, uh, and implements familiar concepts like overlay FS as, and uh, we have ButterFS drivers, ZFS drivers. Uh, there's a Windows uh, driver PR as well. 
Um, and if you, we have a, we've simplified the snapshot model to actually decouple it from containers, so you can use it without containers. Um, in addition to that, there's a service that will let you do diffs between container snapshots, uh, so that you can choose any point in the uh, in, in the set of layers to actually select which uh, to actually generate a, a layer diff from that, which can be used to uh, push and pull images. In addition to that, we have lightweight metadata stores uh, for images and containers, uh, um, and these, these basically let you declare the, uh, the resources that make up a given container, uh, in addition to uh, a tasks. That, so, but, and and the, ma the, main, the main runtime component is actually done through the task service, and th this interacts with uh, multiple runtimes. So you can have Linux and VM runtimes and Windows runtimes all right next to each other in the same container D. And this all, of course, sits on top of the operating system. So the uh, ContainerD is a client-heavy architecture. Um, you have an API client that interacts directly with the gRPC services in ContainerD, uh, which, which manages the runtimes for you, but you also interact with the operating system. This, uh, this, a this uh, large kind of fat client is, uh, is uh, made available in a rich Go API. I suggest you check it out. Um, the Go doc is very detailed, and there's an excellent getting started guide that you can use uh, to, to see how it works. So a little bit about uh, pulling in. Actually, well, I'll skip ahead um, to uh, Phil's got a great demo that's probably uh, more interesting for the talk, so we'll skip ahead to that. All right. All right, so uh, I'm pretty upset at Sven for showing some container D client library code before we got up here, but oh well. Um, no, really, I'm, this is going to be pretty simple and straightforward, and like Sven said, the, the beauty of that is just um, how really easy it is to embed container D in a Go program to create, start a container. Um, so I've got a couple slides here before I switch to, to an actual code editor, build a program, but uh, this is maybe a little easier to read and see uh, before I start scrolling around. Uh, the interesting part here is that obviously uh, you've seen, even this morning, and two or three times you've seen people type CTR and a command. Uh, so there's a simple CTR client. Uh, I think when Steve-O gets to the charts about kind of support, you know, CTR is not really part of the formal API of ContainerD, but it's obviously a very helpful tool for you know, playing around with ContainerD from a client perspective. Uh, so in this case, um, on the code side, importing the ContainerD uh, client library, connect to the socket, set up a namespace, pull an image. It's that easy. Uh, you can do the same thing with uh, the CTR pull command, and you can CTR image ls, see that you actually have a image. Um, again, ContainerD is less... Um, prescriptive than, for example, the Docker daemon. So when I reference an image, I actually have to say docker.io slash library. Um, it's not going to automatically resolve to Docker Hub. Uh, the resolver uh, interface is pluggable, uh, so obviously you can talk to other registries, other implementations, uh, if that code is contributed. Uh, running a container, again, very similar to some of the code that Sven showed. You create a new container object, create a task, and as Steve had just said, the task uh, interface is what actually drives the runtime, in this case, run C. Uh, so task start, and I'm done. Again, I can use the CTR run command in, in a very similar way to uh, run a container. Uh, kill a task, uh, again, very straightforward. Send a signal, I get my exit status because I'm waiting on it, and I can print out uh, an exit code. Again, I can do that with CTRT, the task command, and, and kill a running uh, process. So again, very you know, simple ideas, simple Im implementation. Um, all the code you've just seen, I'm going to switch to a, uh, yeah, that's definitely big enough, I think. Wow, it's beautiful. Um, this is actually directly cut and paste from the getting started URL that Steve just showed. So you've just seen pieces of this, obviously a few more Packages are imported. Um, I've added some print apps just to make it clear when we run this. But again, this is just all of that piece together, connecting to the container D daemon, setting my namespace, pulling the image, creating the container. Um, 
I've deferred a delete, so when I exit, it's actually going to delete those resources. Uh, creating the task, waiting on it, starting it. I wait three seconds, then I kill it, and I output that uh, exit status. So in 93 lines of code, I have a complete uh, container engine, in, in essence. I've embedded container D in my project, and uh, if you delete all the, the printfs that I added, you've got barely 80 lines of code to do that. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, wow, we're extremely big. How about that? Uh, so again, as I said, uh, no tricks here. This is that same. I cut and paste this an hour ago straight out of the Getting Started Guide. Um, I can simply go build my example. Um, I'm pseudoing because the container D socket is protected by root. And you can see that I'm connecting to the socket. I pulled the image, I ran it, I'm waiting three seconds, and now I killed it. Pretty straightforward, maybe not even that exciting. Uh, but again, the simplicity of that, what Sven uh, talked about a few minutes ago, I think is really the power there of being able to embed um, this whole container engine, drive it via a simple client API. Uh, obviously, if you want more power, you can go directly to the gRPC interfaces, but the client library abstracts a lot of that for you in a really straightforward way and, uh, and makes it uh, really powerful. So back to Steve-O. Good. So uh, just since the last update, uh, we this since beta zero, uh, we've added a bunch of stuff. Um, garbage collection is in now, so there's full garbage collection for resources in Container D. It makes it really easy to keep things as small as possible. We've added an introspection API that allows you to inspect the configuration and status of uh, Container D plugins, uh, which are roughly uh, compiled in components. Uh, so, and so this basically, so components can say, hey, I'm using this path and I'm exporting this resource and, and it allows those components to uh, basically define what they're doing. We've also added multi-platform support and that is uh, continuing to grow as well as the concept of container extensions. So we can actually, so rather than having Docker store the container JSON on disk, it can actually just store it directly in container D and any runtime integrating with container D can store their own format in there. Uh, there's been a new maintainer uh, uh, added. He, he's a, um, uh, worked, it's Akahiro Suda from NTT. He's a, uh, been a huge contributor on the Mobi project and has also uh, brought that amazing set of contributions over to the Container D project. So uh, thanks to him. Uh, upcoming, there's going to be uh, uh, GCP, uh, GC, sorry, GC, like garbage collection policy configurations so that one can uh, select how things are actually collected. Uh, and then we're also working on having uh, good multi-platform CI infrastructure so that we can merge pull requests with confidence across uh, any platform that can uh, provide a builder for Go. Uh, as well as distro packages and documentation, and then uh, we'll have uh, Windows support roughly around 1.1. Uh, this is, uh, so we have also have a very tightly defined release process. If you're interested in it, I suggest you read it. Um, we have uh, we've defined a process uh, showing the, uh, like how releases will come out, how long they'll be supported, uh, and uh, how the versioning system will work. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very detailed document, and if you have any comments or uh, are interested in it, please, please t check out that link. Uh, the most recent release, Beta 2, uh, it is, uh, just came out last week, and uh, we are going, uh, it, it's, it's fairly stable at this point. I think we are com uh, feature complete, except for the GC policy changes inside of, uh, it for the, uh, for the, for the 1.0 release. Please, uh, I suggest you download it now and, and try it out and let us know if there's any major problems or, th or things aren't working as we said. So uh, we also have, in, in that release document, we've defined uh, a supported components uh, section so that we can declare which, which parts of the system are actually supported over time. Uh, so for example, uh, with the 1.0, release, the gRPC and metrics API will be supported and, uh, in, in a backwards compatible manner. 
the Go uh, client API will be considered unstable uh, until maybe the 1.1 or the 1.2 release, depending on uh, how things go and how things are working. The CTR tool is out of scope, although, uh, you know, who knows what the future holds. Uh, so uh, we also have a support horizon. Uh, this is a bit of a, a mouthful, but uh, contain basically Containerd re releases will be supported one year after release or up until the uh, release of the next minor version. So you can have confidence that uh, we will be backporting packages to all active releases of Containerd uh, until their end of life. In this table inside of the releases document, you'll be able to go there and figure out which uh, which releases are active and which ones are end of life. If you're curious about the progress of the 1.0 release, uh, it's milestone 13 in GitHub, and you can go there and uh, see what is still active and open. And uh, at this point, I should have put a uh, one of those bar charts on there to show you, but I think we're about 80%. What happened here? Did I get logged out again? So uh, going further with container D, um, again, uh, we have the GitHub URL. Uh, please, oops. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> yeah, so if there's any bug fixes, adding tests, or you just want to tell us we're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, let us know. Uh, please check out the Getting Started documentation. It, you can go through it pretty quickly. Um, and if you find anything there that's problematic, again, let us know. Um, we, are, we are porting to like ARM and S390X and PowerPC. If there's any other architectures that people are interested in, that would be good to let us know so we can, uh, we can continue that. We also have a couple of stress tests as well as a bucket bench um, that will let... So, so bucket bench is a, is a tool by Phil Estes that will uh, allows you to compare various container runtimes. And we also have a container D stress test that we run for out, uh, several hours on end to ensure that container D uh, is, is working uh, under load on actual uh, workloads. Uh, again, try it out. Uh, and then also um, there's the Kubernetes CRI, uh, which is an incubation project for CRI container D. And uh, uh, Lantau and uh, Abi will be describing that next. Thank you.